So it's this interesting thing that James is coming out here, literally saying, you desire, but you do not have. So you kill, you murder, you hate people. You covet, but you can't get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Drop down with me to verse six, because here's the key. He gives us more grace. It's worth noting that even when we fail in this, there's still grace. There's still unmerited favor, even when we're in conflict, that maybe we even start, even when our motives are wrong. That's why the scripture says, God opposes the proud, but shows favor to the humble. Verse 11, brothers and sisters, do not slander one another. Anyone who speaks against a brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. When you judge the law, you are not keeping it, but you're sitting in judgment over it. There's only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and destroy. But you, you, who are you to judge your neighbors? There's some of the causes that we just talked about. But when we read that set of verses, there's some remarkably ineffective. Again, I told you, I'm not going to give you the highlight reel and say this is what you do. But I will say this, this set of verses gives some remarkably ineffective ways to deal with conflict that's battling within and then outside of us. And the first one, it says, a remarkably ineffective way right there in your outline, slander people. Do you really think you'll fix the battle going on within you by taking shots at somebody else? Christians, let us not forget that slander is sin. It's wrong. It's against the image of God. And I say that as strong as I say it. Because in our culture, slander has been normalized, where slander has become okay. Slander is the misrepresentation of a person in a way that negatively shows of their character and diminishes their reputation, and is often built on hearsay, lies, and jealousy. And our society's made it normal. Hear me today, I don't care what side of the aisle you land on, your favorite politician will do a slanderous smear campaign any given election cycle against somebody they've never actually met who they don't actually deeply know. Your news station anchors, no matter what news you listen to, are at least 20 steps away from what happened in protected rooms. Then after a telephone game, they report to you on the truth, again, of someone they've never met, often making character accusations of that person that they've never met and they don't know, and then tell you to make your mind up based on what they say 20 steps removed. And often we fall for it. And it's built on slander. So Christians in the pursuit of the holy, as Tozer said, it's built on sin and we fall for it. Slander is not a way to solve some internal angst within us. Brothers and sisters, don't slander one another. And then he puts a period at the end of the sentence. The one that wrote Proverbs said it like this up on the screen. There are six things that the Lord hates. Seven that are abominations to him. Hear this. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil, a false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among the brothers. The slander would land in the things that God hates. Not that he hates those of us that have fallen into slander, but that it is so against the image of who God is, it would land on the hate list in Proverbs. One existential philosopher says it like this, slander is society's cancer. And my fear for myself and us as a church and broader society is that if slander is the sin that we turn a blind eye to and excuse, then we will continue to wound others while remaining internally wounded ourselves. 